Morning everyone. Um, as usual, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. So um, if you could possibly stick some comments in as usual, that would be marvellous. Um, oh, the dog's sneezing, that's all we need. Great. Um, very nice to be with you all this morning. Um, and uh, yeah, start of September. Um, how cool is that? Um, actually pretty cool this morning. It's the, the temperature's going down and down. Um, but uh, really nice to be here. And uh, as usual, do, do just stick a comment in if you've uh, just arrived and, um, and say where you're from and, um, and who you are. And uh, yeah, just, just meet and greet uh, as we get going. Um, yeah, uh, it's kicking on for nine o'clock, which is good. Um, there's quite a lot to get through this morning and I I kind of thought it might be quite nice to be a bit shorter than usual um, but uh, you know what it's like when you get going when you're in the moment it just get, you get a bit enthusiastic good morning Trish how lovely to see that you're here um, you'll probably enjoy being on the other end of the, <laughs> the Facebook live for a bit Mel, lovely, great to see you. And Sheila, oh, we've got from one end of Britain to the other. How delightful. Um, and Emma, oh, hang on. Good morning from sunny Birmingham. <sighs> Wonderful. Hi, Emma, great to see you. And Margie from South Africa, welcome. You are very, very welcome. Um, I wonder if you know Jean, Margie. Are you a friend of Jean Pinar's? Um, as she's the only other person I know in uh, in uh, Johannesburg. Um, right, we must press on. Um, I have a candle here today. It is a scented one, um, which I'm going to light. Oh, for heaven's sake. I am going to light. Do you know? Ha 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 ha. I'll get there in the end. Um, yeah, we have a little scented candle. Nothing from another country or anything. It's just a bog standard Yankee candle, partly because I'm trying to use all my candles up before we move and partly um, because the dog's flatulent and we share the study. So uh, here we go, but mostly, mostly um, to remember the light of Christ with us all around the world from uh, from Birmingham to Johannesburg, from, from Hampshire to Clacton-on-Sea. Um, let's, let's just pray and invite Jesus to be with us this morning. Lord, thank you. We know that you are with us. Thank you for that light that warms us and guides us and uh, draws us together, even though we're in such different places. Uh, we just ask that you will be with us this morning in all our different circumstances, um, that you'll light up uh, anywhere in our lives that, that needs your love and your light today and guide us as we look in, in our little messy world. Um, we just ask that you'll help us to, to keep the big picture uh, of sharing your wonderful gospel across the nations. Um, be with us now, Lord. Help us to uh, focus on you and focus on the, the big picture, um, but care for the little details too. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. I'll try not to forget that. <sighs> Lovely to see more people here. Jane Butcher's here as well. More of Jane later. Um, right, okay, on with the show. Um, I have a friend who um, was uh, at the time, which was goodness me in my 20s, about 30 years ago, um, was, uh, was a professional actor. And he was, um, he was between shows. He was resting, as they say. And, um, <laughs> and uh, the local Amdram Society had invited him to come and direct a show for us. It was Taming of the Shrew. And um, uh, he, he came and, and directed the show. Uh, and I, I still remember something that he said during that. He, he said, after rehearsals one night, he said, goodness me, he said, it, it's quite amazing. Um, you lot do a full day's work, your teachers, your doctors, your 
Um, you know, you, you've got everything to do with your families as well. You do all that during the day. And then at 7.30 in your spare time, you come out here and, and you throw yourselves into the rehearsal. And he says, I've worked with a lot of professional actors who, um, who spend all day grumbling about the theatre, about the management, about the show, about the production, about the director. And, um, and you lot come and you just throw yourselves into it as if you love it. And it, <laughs> and it reminded me of, um, do you remember when George Lings came and did those wonderful talks at the uh, International Conference in 2016? And he, he had one of his little throwaways, which was, um, don't be afraid to be amateur, uh, because amateurs do things for love. Uh, that's where the word comes from. Uh, you do things for love when you're an amateur. It's the difference between being a professional uh, and an amateur. Um, amateurs do it for love, not for money. Um, <laughs> and I, as I was remembering that, I, I checked up the definition uh, <laughs> and, um, and found one of the examples online, and the online definition was, um, you know, how they give little quotes, um, a, a bunch of stumbling amateurs. And it was a way of describing somebody who doesn't do things properly, a group of people who don't do things properly. They're a bunch of amateurs. Um, and I thought, actually, it's nothing to do with being incompetent. Um, it's just, that's just so wrong. It's about doing things for love. And if that makes us a bunch of stumbling amateurs in the messy church world, where we're doing things for the love of God and for the love of people around us in our communities, then, frankly, I'm proud to be an amateur. Um, so... Um, oh, I've got, just got a message from Jane, Jane Leddy, uh, who, who says, I thought she said, my wife has died. Um, she's actually said, my Wi-Fi has died. So Jane will be joining us again, but um, and not bereaved, which is, which is good. Um, so, amateurs, bear that in mind. Um, just, I'm just, before we get on to the, uh, the changes to the regional coordinator network, um, I wanted to set it in the bigger picture because... I'm, I am so guilty of this, and I'm sure you're not, but I am, of um, losing sight of the wood for the trees, of, of getting so engrossed in the little details that I forget the bigger picture, what really matters. If you strip everything else away, um, what's left to us? And, um, and there's this wonderful passage from Colossians 3, and I'm not going to read the whole of the chapter, but it is very corking. Um, but there's some lovely things in it which I think are really relevant today. So I'll just pick out ah, selectively, sorry Paul, um, a few verses from Colossians 3. And Paul writes, um, since then you've been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Here, there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I'm jumping through to the end of the chapter. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to curry their favour, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you're serving. Just pulling out those very, very subjective bits from this passage, um, it kind of sets the, the tone, I think, for, for what I wanted to, to talk about today, um, which is all these changes. Um, that, that first paragraph, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Yes, we're tinkering with the regional coordinator structure, but frankly, it's an earthly thing. It's a, it's a structure. It's not what... Messy church is all about. 
Um, we're not about structures and, and trying to get all centralised and, and governance-ish. Um, Messy Church is lighter foot. It's, it's there to serve God. It's there to serve people. It's there to, to grow kingdom. Um, and where church helps us do that, then that's amazing. Um, and we will, we will become more church. Um, but it's about keeping our eyes on, on the higher things, on the bigger picture. Because otherwise we'll just get stuck in doing messy church as we've always done it. And the next generation will come along and it'll be old fashioned and fuddy duddy and, and useless. So we have to keep our, our hearts and minds um, in accordance with the Holy Spirit, that sort of ever refreshing Holy Spirit. It's a truism, I know, but it's such an easy trap to fall into. So keep an eye on the bigger things, on the bigger picture. Um, then there's that fabulous bit about here is no, no Gentile or Jew circumcised, uncircumcised Scythians and so on. Um, and I think that's really important as we go forward, thinking about, um, I suppose, the, the early church tried to avoid hierarchy. <laughs> and, um, and I would really love us to dismantle hierarchy in messy church wherever we can. Uh, and I know it sneaks in, um, and it's very easy for me to say because you know I'm one of the very few people privileged to be paid for this and kind of in there at the beginning and so on. But where we can, let's try to be this wonderful equal team uh, where nobody's more special than anybody else. Nobody's got all the answers, especially not me. We're all in it together. And as the next paragraph says about uh, members of one body, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. The great thing about Messy Church is these friendships that are blossoming uh, all around the world. And, and it's so lovely to hear of, of Canadians having um, conversations on a weekly basis with the Australians over Zoom and things like that. We're, we are joined together in friendship and, and that one bodiness where we are equal and we're all different and distinct but we're together and we're stronger because we're together and those different gifts can shine that's that's really important um, and then lastly the the bit that's addressed to slaves which is quite interesting um, <laughs> um, the the bit about whatever you do work at it with your with all your heart as working for the lord and whether that's our messy church work or whether it's our, our inherited church work or whether it's our work as as teachers or plumbers or cleaners or or um, university professors it doesn't matter what paul is saying is just whatever you do keep the bigger picture uh, work at it with your heart with integrity um, and try and keep that that love, that love of what you're doing, of, of the place where God's put you, um, of the job that God's given you. And, and today we're, you know, in this few these few minutes, we're thinking about messy church, obviously. So my mind at the moment is is on our work within messy church. Um, but I think it applies far far broader than that. So big picture all equal, working together and doing it all out of love for God. That's that's really where where we want to go today. Um, so what's going on? Look, it's 12 minutes past nine already and I have hardly started. Goodness me. There's lots of change around at the moment. Um, we realised yesterday that Jane has been working for BRF for 10 years, 10 years and one day today. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Um, and over that time, so much has changed. Um, and that's one of the reasons, really, why we're looking at change now. Um, I think there are, uh, there are a few reasons. Jane's retiring, as, as you all know, at Christmas. And so it's an opportunity to, to assess what we're doing um, and, and why we do it and whether it's still the best way. Um, there's a sense in which Messy Church has been going for 16 years now. Um, which is a long time. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a, a birth through to um, actually adulthood almost, isn't it really? So that's a long time and we, we need to um, 
yeah, we need to at least consider change during that time um, and whether we need to change. And I think we do. I think things have changed so much since we started in, in whenever it was, 2004, was it? Yes. Um, also, um, things at BRF have changed. Um, and um, we, we're more um, determined and excited about making volunteering for all sorts of sides of message of BRF as, as exciting a prospect as possible and as, um, as positive an experience as possible. We, in other words, we want to make volunteering for BRF the best possible volunteering experience in the world. Um, it, it, we really value everybody who volunteers for BRF because we couldn't function without you all. Um, and we really want to make that a fabulous, fabulous experience and, and be very give and take in all sorts of currencies other than money. And, um, and to that end, Jane Butcher is, uh, she's been working for BRF for yonks and yonks, um, but she's actually start, just started in a new role as, um, oh, she can tell you more about the exact thing. I always forget the name, something like volunteer lead at BRF. And she'll be looking after um, the, the whole volunteering picture of BRF. So we will be working very closely with Jane, which is um, a huge privilege and joy always. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Jane Butcher will be part of uh, the volunteering system going forward. And I think the last significant change is, um, is really this, this whole being tossed in the salad spinner of, of the pandemic, um, that uh, we've realised, amongst everything else, that um, being online is way, way easier than it used to be. And we can do far more online than we had the confidence to do before. And I look out at, at all that you do uh, in your messy church online, in your your YouTubes, your your Facebook lives, your you know your Zooms, your webinars, and and all the rest of it. And you know, I just take my hat off in awe because there is so much confidence and fun and joy and celebration being shared online. And um, and I think that's that's significant going forward, especially when we don't know whether we're going to be able to meet again consistently um, in the near future and I'm talking in the UK but I suspect it applies in a lot of countries as well. So what we've done is we've thrown everything up in the air and said Woohoo, what's the best way we think of supporting messy churches uh, in the UK and I'm just thinking about UK today really. Um, how do we best support messy churches in the UK going forward in this, this sort of brave new world that we're in? And what we've come up with is um, to invite uh, all the regional coordinators um, and later on we'll invite others as well. But for starters, we've tried to keep it uh, sort of easy for ourselves um, and invite all the regional co coordinators to think, oh, where do I belong? What are my strengths? How could I um, take the sort of things that I was being asked to do as a regional coordinator and and do them in a in a different way, or perhaps I think a more focused way is what I mean. Being a regional coordinator is a huge job. And you basically said, here, have Lincolnshire, um, be messy church for Lincolnshire. And you had to be a, a, a listening ear and you had to be a, a trainer and you had to be a, a traveling off into the wilds and you had to um, have an intimate knowledge of Lincolnshire and um, you just had to be all things to all people. And in this new system, because we can go online, we're thinking actually we could have teams of specialists who would be available to anybody. So I will run through the, the teams that we're suggesting. Um, we're going to give this a try for a year or so. And I suspect that as we try it out, all sorts of glitches will come our way and we'll work them through together and all sorts of brilliant, even better ideas will come out of 
out of the teams and we will improve it as we go along. But if you don't start somewhere, you, you might as well give up, really. So what have we got? Um, the teams divide roughly into three sections. Um, and we'd invite the regional coordinators to have a think about be in as many as you want, as many as you've got time for, as many as you can feel committed to. Um, uh, and there's nine, so it's, you know, I can't remember them all off the top of my head. But um, the backup teams, for starters, uh, we've got the gold team, who are the prayers. And we've got some passionate prayers, people who pray uh, in our network. And we don't get anywhere without, uh, without prayer, that sort of direct acknowledgement to God and tapping into God, listening to God, trying to, to be uh, his people, trying to listen to where God wants us to go. So the praying team is going to be crucial. Um, and uh, yeah, the, there's details for all of these, but the prayer team is, is, is the gold, gold team. Um, Next, we've got the, the orange team, who are the advocates. And uh, these are people who will uh, be advocates mostly for Messy Church, but also with an interest in BRF as well, uh, Bible Reading Fellowship, the organisation behind Messy Church. And the sort of people that we might be able to say, oh, we're exhibiting at the Christian Resources Exhibition as BRF. Would you come along and help on the stand? Or somebody in your area has asked if somebody from BRF could go and talk at their church service about the work of BRF for Bible Sunday. And we could say to someone in the orange team, great, could you go? Uh, so it's that sort of job. So really, it's being an advocate for BRF and specifically for Messy Church. Then we've got the support teams. How am I doing? Oh, 20 past, 20 past. You see, I was going to be finished in 20 minutes. I hardly started. Um, the support teams, uh, their colours are um, a purple and green and teal and red and pink. Um, the purple team is um, a lot of people uh, just want a, a kind of listening ear, a friendly ear, um, uh, like a coach, really. Um, to guide them on their messy church journey and it, it might just be to deal with one particular problem or issue or it might be to walk with them over a few months or maybe even longer. So the purple team we're calling the alongsiders, people who don't necessarily know anymore but are just happy to walk with a messy church uh, as part of the, their journey. Um, so they're, they're sort of coaches um, and we'll have to work out how formal uh, we want that training to be. Uh, but uh, just people who are prepared to walk alongside others. Um, and then the green team, they're the getting going team, like a, a green traffic light. And they're people who are very confident to just say, you want to start a messy church? Let me tell you all about it. Let me answer your questions. I'll come along. I'll be on a Zoom for your team, for your for your church elders or your PCC. We'll do a quick Zoom and I'll I'll just be there to answer all your questions or I'll pop along to your church and I'll um, I'll have a word with your team. Um, it's it's that sort of just getting a messy church started. So I think that's a really specific skill um, and and I think that's a really exciting team to be in. And really, uh, when, you, when you've done it, it's kind of really easy to do, isn't it? And it doesn't take huge amounts of preparation, um, but you're just there and it's so useful as more and more people want to get going messy church again. Then we've got the teal team and the teal team, uh, teal because that's Jane's favorite color. So um, we have the teal team who are the specialists. So there are a lot of areas of messy church which are um, increasingly specialist, like science and SEND and um, uh, rural stuff um, and eco stuff. Uh, thing, uh, social action is another one. And those are areas where um, somebody has been doing that aspect of messy church in perhaps a slightly deeper way. So they're kind of experts or specialists. They might, in the teal team, we might also have people who um, are specialists 
for an area. So if you were particularly passionate or even paid <laughs> as part of your job to, if you're passionate about a chunk of Worcestershire, for example, um, that you really, really, you have this calling to, to grow messy churches in your bit of Worcestershire, then you're a specialist for that bit of Worcestershire. Um, or you're a children's advisor who's got messy church as part of your brief, but you can only work in Cornwall, whatever that might be. So the people who need to do it as a specialist have a calling to be a specialist for a particular area. They'll be in the teal team. Uh, we might need to sift it through at a later date, but for now, um, the teal team is going to take all our sort of specialists, which is great. Um, uh, I, I will answer. I will answer your comments later. I'm sorry, I can't read and um, <laughs> and talk at the same time, but I will go through them afterwards. I promise. Um, the red team is the trainers team, and those are people who are confident and up to date with all the latest developments, which will make sure that we, we, we keep that team really up to speed with everything um, to offer wider training. So, you know, <coughs> Kathmandu says we really need somebody to come and give us some messy church training and we can say have someone from our red trainers team. Uh, they will come and uh, or they will do it online which is much more likely, to be honest. People who are really good at, at helping others develop their skills. Um, and the pink team is the last of the sort of support uh, teams. Um, and that's uh, the readers and writers team. Um, and a lot of you have huge skills in writing sessions for Messy Church and articles and chapters for books and even whole books. And um, it would be really good to have a, a pool of people there who, um, who are brilliant writers or prepared to write um, and do a column every now and then for Get Messy or, or a chapter for a book. People who are happy to write and know one end of an apostrophe from another. Um, but also people who, if you can imagine, I get quite a lot of, um, uh, quite a lot of people saying, here is a resource, can you read it and see if it's suitable for Messy Church and share it with the network? If I could have a group of people I could say to, to them, could you have a look at this and, and tell me what you think? It would save so much time um, and, and be so much better than just my brain being put to work on it. So that's the readers and writers. And last but not least, and we've got the silver group, uh, silver team, who are a very small group, who um, that's going to be by invitation only. They're the story keepers, and um, uh, that's a kind of intimate little group who will just um, be rude to me and, and tell, me, um, tell me to look after myself and um, say, oh, but you haven't been done, done anything of, on Messy Church about X, Y or Z. So that's a, that's a, a sort of group of elders who, uh, who keep an eye on me and... Um, yeah, that, they're crucial to my well-being, especially with losing Jane um, <sighs> very soon. Um, so, yeah, so we've got the silver group and we'll be inviting people to come to that. Um, and the last group is um, a fairly broad one, really, um, but they're con another consultative group. Um, the pool of wisdom, who are blue appropriately, uh, but it's basically... Um, a group of people who would be prepared to throw themselves into helping us do stuff which we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. And with a team of, um, is it 1.6 people as of January? It could be me full time and the, me the new role, the messy church coordinator role is a three day a week one. I think that's 0.6. Um, <sighs> there's a limit to what we can do but with a pool of people who would say, yes, I'll help you organise the international conference. I'll help you organise a, a UK day conference. I'll help you organise a this or that or the other. Then we can really start cooking with custard. So um, a pool of wisdom, a sort of wonderful group of people who are just saying, here I am if you need me. Um, that would be fabulous. And that's it. Uh, for the moment, we might find that in due course we need to have um, a young leaders team, for example. Um, and I thought of another one. What was the other one? Oh, um, 
photography and artists we're always short of, of photos you know is there is there some mileage in having a kind of creative photography painting sort of group i don't know um, but for the moment we've got uh, those nine um, to work with and um when the, the messy church coordinator is appointed then that person will uh, have a, a huge role in trying to work with Jane Butcher to give all of those people the best possible volunteering experience with BRF that you can possibly have so that we're giving you everything you need to do the job well to expand your skill base to use your skills um, to celebrate what you can do and to help you um, bring your skills into a wider arena, perhaps, uh, than might otherwise be possible. All for the glory of God. We're all doing this for God. It's not, it's not for anything else. Um, so, yeah, uh, the, if you haven't seen uh, the job advert, it's on the BRF page. Um, uh, and we'll put the link in the, col in the comments um, in due course. Uh, but you, you, you'll find it in the in the newsletter as well, the e-news for today. Uh, oh, no, it came out yesterday, didn't it? So there's the link to that uh, Messy Church coordinator. Um, and do do send that round, friends. Do have a, a pray about um, whether it's something that you, you might be called to yourself. Um, a lovely job, very structural. It needs a completer finisher. It needs somebody who will say, yeah, I will do this job and I will do it by this date. And I have the structures to do this. Um, but somebody who is completely au fait with what Messy Church is all about um, and who loves people, uh, who will just look after our volunteers and help everybody to, to, to be the best person they can be. Uh, that's what it's all about. Um, is there anything else? Oh, there's so much, there's so much. Um, I, I might have to remember bits when I do the same thing again tonight. Um, uh, I'll bring in more details then. Um, the next step for the regional coordinators, as as you'll have seen in your um, in your document, is that we're we're going to have we've got some Zoom conversations next week um, on the seventh, eighth, and ninth. Uh, do join in with with the well. I would suggest one. I think one will be plenty. Uh, do join in with one of those at your convenience. Um, and if we can't get hold of you through one of those, then we'll try and ring round. Um, just to make sure that everybody knows what's happening and can talk through where you feel your gifts are best used going forward. Um, and then we should have everything in place by the beginning of November <laughs> with the great battle cry of what can possibly go wrong? <laughs> so um, I'm here. Uh, my email is, uh, is Lucy. What is my email? Lucy.more at brf.org.uk. Oh, that was very weird. Oh, um, yes. Anyway, um, you can always use the inquiries button on the web page. Any questions at all, anything about the Messy Church coordinator job, uh, anything about the new system, we know change is hard and we know there's been a lot recently. We think this is a moment where we can do change in a really positive way um, and so we really hope that you'll be with us um, that you'll help give this this new scheme the best chance of, of being as effective as it possibly can be <sighs> so a prayer as we finish taken from that lovely Colossians 3 passage um, Lord whatever we do May we work at it with all our heart as working for you, not for human masters, since we know that we will receive an inheritance from you as a reward. It is you we are serving. Amen. Thank you very much and uh, see you all around. <laughs>